Welcome to U Version 2 podcast with me, your host, Brendan McCauley. And today we have a special guest, Kamal Shah. Kamal, would you like to give us a brief introduction about yourself, please? Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Brendan, for uh, getting me on on the show. Um, uh, I just want to say thank you and to, to your to your um, uh, listeners. Um, you know, thank you for for inviting me to be able to share my story. So, a uh, brief in- introduction about myself. Uh, thank you again for for having me on on the show, Brendan. Um, uh, you know, you you might know me as a as a life coach, a JHD certified life coach, but uh, I actually came from a slightly um, a different background. I come from a architecture and design background, so I was previously previously practicing as an architect, a chartered architect um, uh, up in Scotland uh, for a number of years. Um, but something happened in my life where I found that, that there was a something missing in my life, and I, I was. You know, um, searching for it, as I was explaining to you just before the the show, um, which led me to uh, venturing out to Dubai, uh, where I'm based at the moment. Um, so one thing after the other led me to, you know, looking into um, helping not only other people, but as first and foremost, helping myself, trying to, uh, you know, find myself. What is my passion? What is my purpose? And that, that led me to life coaching which is what I'm doing um, uh, at the same time right now. Uh, and here we are talking. So thank you, Brendan, for, <laughs> for reaching out. Yeah, yeah, that's um, it's fantastic. It's interesting to hear that you're uh, an architect and you mentioned when we were briefly chatting, you've spent time in Scotland. So it's quite a, quite a difference moving from Scotland to Dubai, <laughs> especially the heat. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, so, uh, um, it's, yeah. It's a pleasure to have you here today, and um, we, the idea is we can learn from each other's experiences. So um, it's a great opportunity to share your experience with me and obviously uh, the listeners. So just a brief disclaimer, obviously, the interaction today is about happiness, your happiness, your personal life experiences, and events may come up during the conversation. Uh, just go with the flow, feel comfortable, and if there's anything that you don't like, we can obviously cut it out. and. Uh, we don't want to expose you to the world if you're not happy with it. So we heard about Camel, and now Camel has had obviously a few big changes in his life. So on that path, you've come across many challenges, but I would like to ask you, Camel, what does happiness mean to you? Great question, Brendan. Um, if you ask me, you know, 20 years ago let's let's start 20 years ago <laughs> uh midway you know um uh, midway through my midlife uh, i guess you know um 20 years old camille will probably think happiness is about uh, achieving lots of money having a great career um you know all the flashy big cars all the gadgets um all the in things back in the day um, having graduated and wanting to to start off a career, um, so you know at that time it was it was about trying to you know uh, at that time you know, the ambition was to become a star architect, you know a uh, a famous architect. You know you look up to these uh, amazing people, and there's nothing wrong about that. Nothing wrong about wanting to to make an impact and uh, and be seen. You know, uh, at that time, the the big architects, as you you, you might know, um, still is uh, Lord Foster uh, in in the UK, um, Norman Foster um, at that time, uh, the late Zaha Hadid. So these were all kind of big architects that made uh, made the headlines with their you know uh, amazing buildings. Um, mm-hmm in a conceptual the, the concepts that they bring to the table so you know the ambition was to to be seen and to to make an impact and i thought For that sure. was happiness you know chasing those things um but now it's 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 different it's different it's much more um you know i don't know what it's like for you but for me it's it's actually finding um peace inner peace for me um it's nothing about the material stuff um you know whereas before it was about the material so there's nothing wrong about chasing material things but to attach happiness 
to the material things I found right now in, in my stage of, of being is something that's always going to uh, end up in, uh, in, you know, in disappointment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I that's value. It. Yeah. It's because happiness can mean many things to many different people. And um, there is that risk of uh, us confusing uh, certain material pleasures or dopamine hits with happiness. Um, I've recently, I am a member of Toastmasters. I did it to improve my public speaking. Mm. Um, and I give a little speech about happiness and, and the, some of the scientific research between the difference between pleasure and happiness. And I educated myself in this matter as well, but the dopamine with pleasure and the serotonin with happiness and um, it's quite, it's quite interesting how um, what happiness does mean to different people. Because um, what happiness to me could completely different from what happiness means to you. What happiness to my kids or to my granny? You know, it's all obviously mm. relative to your experience. But uh, I appreciate your 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 uh, response there because it is very important. We do need to remember that there's a lot more to life than just material things because material things can just pass. So can you remember a time when you were really, really happy? I think um, earlier today, <laughs> earlier Fantastic. today, actually just, 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 even just, just before, just before jumping onto the call, actually, <laughs> mm. um, uh, I just went out for a run. Uh, I had a really long day, really tough day, and I just felt I needed to just, you know, as soon as I got in, um, said, you know, kids are already in bed, but I say hi to my wife, and then I just went out for a quick run, and um, I felt I felt free. You know, this um, mm -hmm. I guess what's 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 happened in the past is that I've developed a. I don't know whether it's a coping mechanism or something, but you know, I just uh, where where I, when whenever I get stressed, I just go out for a run, and I developed that habit of just going out for a run. And I feel like mm. refreshed, and I feel like I've hit the reset button. Um, so when I'm when I was you know for the 15 minutes quick quick run, uh, I felt I felt at ease. I felt uh, peace. You know, there's, there's you know, I felt free. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so that's the last time <laughs> just a few minutes ago <laughs> it's great to have it so recently yeah <laughs> and then one of the um I, I try to give people some five simple tips for happiness you know and, and number two on that list is exercise because mm. exercise it doesn't have to run a marathon but as simple as a brisk walk or whatever exercise regenerates us and sometimes we we don't pay that enough attention we can be too Actually, you know, you've worked in as an architect in an office. Mm. It's a lot. It's mm. a quite a sedentary existence in, in that uh, particular office environment. Just getting up and getting out, and as you say, going for a, a run, it completely changes um, your perception, your feeling. Uh, so, yes, tip number two on how to be happy: yeah. exercise. So fantastic to hear. Actually, um, just just uh, off the back of that, if you don't mind, I just want to share a quick story about on that yeah. why I developed this habit of running, and it's exactly what you've just mentioned there about sitting for long hours uh, in 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 the studio. Um, I actually developed uh, muscle back um, spasms uh, at night. You had the same thing, right? <laughs> I went to physio. It happened one night. I I I was sleeping and I I just my back just froze froze up. I thought at that time I was gonna die. It was so painful. I was lucky that I had my phone next to me. I had to call at that time. I was renting a, a flat with my roommate. Roommate got me up. Uh, I literally couldn't move. Next day, I went to physio. Physio said, "You've just, you just need to mobilize your back. You've been sitting for long hours. You don't know it, but you've just done this to your back. Get up, go for a run. If you can't run, walk. Whatever it is, mobilize your back." And that's how I developed this habit of just, even just a quick run, like just now, fifteen yeah. minutes, and that just, you know, just. Helps me. You're you're talking to your twin. It happened to me. I think it was about three, four years ago, and. Um, and the, I did a lot as my part of my job. I did quite a bit of driving around Ireland as well, and um, mm. and then obviously office. 
and she said, you know, you guys like you, you're my best clients, <laughs> the, the physiotherapist, because of that sedentary lifestyle of an office in a chair. So not since mm. then, I work from a standing standing desk. I don't sit anymore at all. And at the start, I thought, oh, this is a bit weird, never looking at me, but it's the best thing. You know, you're standing, your, your weight's probably distributed. So uh, it, it just wow. the back, it, wow. it just gave me, <laughs> it, just, it just went, as you said, and I, I needed help to try and get myself back to the car. And I, I just felt like an old cripple, like a younger <laughs> lad helped me get to the car. And, uh, and when I get, once again, I was lucky enough to drive home. And once I was there, I was on the bed. I was like, no. But yeah, so um, all, wow. those, all those simple <laughs> things have such a big impact on our lives. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So um, <laughs> I'm sure the next question you've probably um, thought about or, or discussed it entirely within yourself, because it depends, I suppose, on the stage of our life. Because if I was to ask the young 20, 30 year old camel this question, I think I'd get a different response from this response I'll probably get now. So the question of who am I? I would like camel to tell us I am and finish the sentence with a few examples. Hmm. Interesting. I've um, I've been toying with that with that question. <laughs> still, still am toying with that question. Um, at the moment, I am getting closer by day to my authentic self. Um, whereas previously, I didn't know who I was. I was I was what other people were telling me I was. Mm -hmm. I was what my parents were telling me I was. I was what my um, uh, friends wanted me to be to hang around or, you know, hang about different crowds just to fit in. But now I'm working towards understanding who I really am. I'm working towards that, finding joy in the things that I want to do and I, you know, that energizes me. So that's who I am at the moment. I'm working towards mm -hmm. my authentic, authentic self. I'm not there yet, but one day at a time I'm, I'm working towards that. Fantastic. Because you imagine, um, say we met at a, a bar or a restaurant, whatever, and we're having a chat and we say, how are you doing? You know, so who are you? The, the natural inclination is if you ask me that question, I say, oh, yeah, how are you doing? I'm Brett McCauley. I'm a chartered construction manager. I work in power and I build this and that. So we identify who we are by what we do as a job. Whereas mm. aside from that, you know, I like this, I like that, I do this, I do. we don't identify ourselves with those things because they, they are the things that make us more human and more reachable and contactable as opposed to, no, I'm an architect, I do this, and that's it. Okay, so you're an architect, yep. uh, do, 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 do you do anything else? What do you like to do? <laughs> so yeah, it's a, I, I, if you'd asked me about five, ten years ago, I had a different response than now. Mm. If someone asked me that now, I won't even talk about my work. And, um, one one thing I I have to laugh about it now because whenever I first met my wife, it was in Dublin, and I was out on a Halloween night. And then anyway, she asked me what I do, and I said I'm a DJ, house mm. music DJ. And it wasn't a lie because on the, at the weekends I did DJ on a radio station, but it was just for the love of it. And it wasn't until a, a few weeks or a month or two later she actually realised I had a full time job in the construction <laughs> world. But it was just funny. Who are you? So yeah, yeah. That was that was my approach to it. Um, what does Camel devote his time, energy, and money to? Hmm. Again, uh, the the current me is devoting my time to the things which um, which actually give me energy. Um, which is what I do, you know, I still have my, my day job, right? Um, but my passion is what I do in the evenings, like sessions like this, talking to inspiring people like you who are actually doing um, things which, which energizes yourself. So we, we are connecting. I, I feel connected, uh, energized, 
uh, in uh, helping people, in motivating people. Because as as I mentioned just before we jumped onto the, onto the call, I said you know the content, all the things that you see out there on social media is actually first and foremost um, for for myself. I'm I'm trying to strengthen my own inner being and my own self. If mm-hmm. someone else connects with that, fantastic, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, uh, thank you for for connecting with the stuff that I'm putting out there. But it's actually you know, working on on my own self, my own personal development. Um, so that's what I I do, uh, and you know, even during the day. You, yeah, only where go. would you like? Where would you like to be? What would you want to devote? So you're you're you know, you've, you've told me what you're currently doing. Mm. What would you love to be able to devote? your time, energy, and money towards? It will be to do it, to, to be able to do it uh, full time. Uh, that mm-hmm. means to be able to uh, connect and, and to, you know, again, to, to inspire people because the, the more I do of this, the more it's, it's kind of in a strange thing um, where, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. I had this conversation again. I'm 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 just thinking about that moment in the car where I'm driving back with my um, my boss uh, when I was in architects practice in 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 Scotland. We we were driving back from Inverness. We had to drive up to Inverness from Glasgow. I think it would took about uh, three three hours or something like that. <laughs> just going up for, for 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 an hour and a half meeting and then driving all all the way back and. Um, so we were driving back, and he was driving driving the car, and uh, I was just trying to strike up conversation. And I said, um, "No." He asked me. He said, uh, "You know, what do you do in your spare time?" I said, uh, "Not very much." And I asked him, "So what? You know, what do you do?" And he said, "Well, I exercise." You know, so for some reason we were talking about exercise again. You know, we talked about exercise. He said, "Every day I exercise about forty minutes." And I'm thinking, "Well, this is the guy who goes in first in, last out." How does he have time to exercise? <laughs> I just couldn't work it out because he's the partner, so he's the one that switches the lights on. Yeah. You know, in you know, in the, mm-hmm. the the last guy leaving at night, he was devoted to the job. Uh, amazing guy. He's he's, he's my mentor. I, I treat I still treat him as my mentor. Um, so l- long long story short, um, you know, we talk about energy, and uh, it got me thinking that if I was to do that, I I wouldn't see. You know, I, I would be depleted by the end of the day. But the fact that he's actually putting out energy to get energy in, he's exercising in a weird way. When you put out energy, it comes back to you. That's why I, you know, again, sessions like this, I'm putting out energy. I'm putting out, you know, energy, positive energy. But I do feel energized in a weird way. You know, it it amplifies. So the fact that you know, same same concept with money, for example. You know, people think, oh, you know, or, or giving something away. You know, giving something away. There's yeah. always that kind of fear. You know, what am I getting back? Is it, you don't need to think about what you're getting back. Just just give because just give. the universe, universe works in mysterious ways. I'm telling it you, certainly just, does. <laughs> just it certainly give does. it out there. You won't know how it's going to come back, but it will come back. So, um, yeah. So that's that's a long Fantastic. story short. Yeah. Oh, listen, I'm I'm enjoying this so much because just just the conversation, the the, the experience, you know, the story you're sharing, it's like it's like we're in our, we're we're in our little rooms with the shutters and the doors shut, and we're sitting there going, oh, you know, no one's going to listen to me. So what have I got mm. to say? And I know my experiences, and all we have to do is take the risk of opening that door and walking it through that, because. There's so many millions of us in the world, and we so many of us have a similar story to share and talk about, but we're so shy or we're, we're reserved, we don't want to. And the more I talk about these sort of things, Campbell, the more I just realize you just want to help people. But the problem is when you want to help people, sometimes they're just not ready. They just, yeah. no, no, it's not me. You know, you reach the friends or family and they're just not ready or they don't want to hear. Um, but, you know, as they say, when the student is ready, yeah, teacher appears. <laughs> and 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 what what you've said there is quite important as well because um, it, I've I, w- I was thinking about this. I'm thinking it's okay. Um, keep if if you're listening to this and you if you are thinking about reaching out like Brendan and myself, um, you have something to say and you want to put it out. Just put it out there. 
don't worry. Don't worry about the likes. Don't worry about the, the there's no response. Just put it out there. Trust me. Yeah. Because like Brendan's saying, when the student is ready, the, um, the teacher appears. Um, and you never know who's going to pick it up. But if yeah. you have something to say, just put it out there. Positive to say, put it out there. Uh, and I'm Absolutely. telling you, the universe works in mysterious ways. You don't know. In the same way it's that Brendan now... To perform. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And Brendan and myself are, are talking right now. And, you know, a year ago, even a couple of months ago, we, we don't know each other. But exactly. somehow, because we are connected, we are, you know, the synergy is there. And here we are. So if you're listening to this, and if you have something that you want to share, just put it out there. There's no reason not to do it. Great, great words of encouragement. Absolutely. Now, th that's you no, know, that's an example of how someone worries. Should I or shouldn't I put it out? So, Camel, would you say that you have a few things that you worry about? Um, I would say at the beginning. Uh, again, recently, I think yesterday, I posted a, a video on on instagram about the first ever video that i put up there uh, at the beginning of pandemic the first week of pandemic mm. um i in gut feeling is i wanted to reach out and help people because people around me even you know the shops downstairs were laying off staff um mm. everyone was panicking nobody knew what was going to happen the lockdown was imminent and i just felt like i just wanted to help people so i yeah. you know forced myself in a in a in a I guess, a crude way uh, to record a video of me stuttering and going, um, um, you know, in front of the camera saying, I'm, I'm here to help. But that was my, my intention was I wanted to just mm -hmm. tell people I'm here. If you want to talk to me, let's have a chat. And I forced myself. Um, and that was me worrying, worrying about if I got the, you know, the, the words right. You know, do I need to have a script? Do I need to do that? Do I need to have a fancy camera? Do I need this, that, that? I'm yeah. all those things start to come up, and the, the the biggest thing was that who am I to to do this? That was the biggest mm -hmm. fear that I had at that time. Yeah. yeah, right. Who am I? You know, if I'm looking yeah. at the big big guys like Tony Robbins and you know all these guys, who am I? Little Camille, yeah, imposter to, to syndrome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But we, you can we, overcome that. That yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is challenging, but you have to quieten that mind and just say, going back to your why, why am I doing this? Yeah. Amplify that why. When you amplify that why, the doubts and the fears get reduced. Absolutely. No, it's, it's fantastic. It, it, it is. It's the, it's the first step. Even if you stumble, it's the step. It's moving forward. We learn from doing, don't we? That, that yep. really is. Like in... <laughs> Whenever the lockdown kicked in here, I went online every weekend doing a DJ set. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> nice. I was like, oh yes, I can I can DJ again because yeah. I can I can post it on Facebook. I don't need to have a, a venue. If anyone wants to listen, listen in. So yeah. it, be, it became a Saturday afternoon tradition. People around French back in Ireland or UK or wherever. Have you, have you still got that? You you, you should share it. Well, it's on, my, it's on, on my website. It's on my website. All right. Under awesome. discover more um, i recorded them and and uh, they're there if uh, obviously facebook sometimes mutes some of the song some of the songs because they'll say they're copyright but at the end of oh, the day copyright, they, yeah. tend, they tend to release most of them but it's an opportunity i just wanted to reach out and entertain people mm. if they're stuck at home but uh, it, it's funny it really is um so you mentioned some worries and various things i got there but then whenever if we do or if we do find ourselves in a place of worry by the way we all hopefully i'd like to share with people worrying does nothing but if we do something about that challenge actually we can overcome that worry so worrying actually does nothing other than stress us so try to yeah. bear that in mind folks um do something as i'm going to ask hamel now what do you do to seek comfort solace or need to relax another great question um for me again because there's so much noise out there um which is understandable things are getting much much easier to to do these days and there's a lot of um you know a lot of different voices saying you should do this you should do that um for me 
I go back to I go back to to running to my exercise. <laughs> I just tend to gravitate towards that because that gives me that fifteen minutes, thirty minutes, whatever it is, whatever I can get of just um, re- relax in 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 a in a in a funny way. I, I'm 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 relaxed when I'm uh, when I'm just having a quick jog. Um, that's one way. The other way is, you know, I do have my drives in in the morning, my commute to work, um, and every, every single morning, uh, and also coming back, um, I put on an audio book. At the moment, I'm listening to um, the Prosperous Coach mm-hmm. um, uh, on audio audio book. Um, so that's that's another, you know, taking opportunities time. during the day. Yeah, d- during the day, you know, everyone. I think you know, if you're listening to this again. Think about what you're doing that you could actually be doing more, uh, you know, in a more productive or in a more kind of relaxed way rather than spending mm-hmm. time, you know, not saying Netflix is a bad thing. I still watch Netflix, but, you know, how much Netflix are you watching? Can you sacrifice an hour <laughs> rather than watching, you know, binge watching, you know, yeah, sacrifice yeah. an hour and doing something more, you know, yeah. Instead of watching productive. the whole eight series, watch two exactly. and do something else with your time. <laughs> exactly. Start start bit by bit. <laughs> yeah. So it seems that um, the running's a, a big part of your life, which is great and mm. it's positive. And you say it gives you time to sort of think uh, when you're out running on your own or look around, gather your thoughts. Um, from what would you derive? What what do you, would you say you derive joy, pleasure, happiness, fulfillment from at the minute? Mm. Um, at at my current state is um, first and foremost my family, uh, and that's something big that I've made a conscious decision to gravitate or to focus my my uh, attention to. Um, again, thinking about where I was before practicing in architecture where I would put my work and career first you know thinking about the the weekends that I would go in and you know thinking about those weekends are now sacred for me uh, I would spend you know I would I wouldn't only on certain occasions where I would do you know additional work but other than that you know weekends I don't do any calls I don't do any other thing aside from this is family time and mm-hmm. that's something that I've developed um um try to keep up uh, in terms of he- setting healthy boundaries um simple things like you know yeah. not picking up calls after work you know simple things like that i think you know and not feeling guilty about it because you know that's my time right so absolutely. it's challenging yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> so, because yeah. the um you, you can get into that habit and that routine of it mm. but a lot of the time our employers aren't actually asking us to email at eight o'clock at night. They're not asking us to look at our phones and respond to things. It's something that we have to deal with. It's like, put your phone down or turn off the notifications and spend time with your family or or your friends or whatever it is you need to do. So that that is another thing that I had to learn to do um, was to to switch off, to to actually not, you know, when it's too easy when you go to bed, pick up the phone, because you have your emails and everything there and you're like, oh, sure, I'll have a look. I'll have a quick look. And once mm. you look, that's it. You know, you could be it's lost it, yeah. for an hour. And it's, I had to stop that. And doing that, and, and as you said, your weekends, div- creating that division and separation, it's important for us to have that free time because otherwise we're going to work ourselves, not necessarily work to death, but we're going to stress ourselves. And when we're in a stress state, we're not then good at our work so we actually mm. need that break time to be productive and to be good at what we're doing whatever that work is we're doing um for example another thing is you know during the day how many of us have sat at our desk working through lunch thinking we're going to be productive mm. when the scientific fact is we're being unproductive because we just get more and more depleted and more tired we need a break have that break have that pause and then we can come back energized and we're more productive. But then I, that's what I learned. I like to sh- I can share people a few time management tips if they're interested. Absolutely. Again, absolutely. They're simple. And this is the best thing I've, I've discovered and reminded myself, uh, Camel, I'm sure you're aware. A lot of the good things to change in our life are simple. 
They're just simple habits that we have put to the wayside because life has got too busy. So um, we're getting close to the end, but it's fantastic uh, talking to you and hearing your experience. Uh, something you actually touched on earlier on sort of aligns with this question. Um, is Camel living the life he chose for himself or is he living someone else's ideal? Um, at the moment, uh, I would say I am gravitating towards the life that I choose to to live and carve out and, and design. Um, again, going back 20 years ago, it was you know, almost predetermined um career choice um you know again at that time it was trying to uh, get approval from family friends um obligation feeling obliged to do certain things uh with the career um but now you know understanding that you know, opinions and, you know, other people's opinions. Yes, you know, thank you for the opinions, but I need to live uh, a life that I am, again, going back to authentic, you know, what is my authentic life? Who is Camille? Yeah. And what do I en enjoy doing? And what, you know, what what kind of life where, uh, that, that you know, what, what is the life that I want to to, to live and, and, and design for myself? So that's that's where yeah. I am at the moment. Fantastic, fantastic. Because uh, life is a journey, and uh, mm. we're always along that journey at some stage, whatever the path takes us, um, based on our decisions. But one good thing is you make the right decision; it brings you down a, a better path ultimately. So, just to finish up, then, a few, three quick fire questions. Now you can mm. elaborate on them if you want, or you can just give a very short, short, simple response. So, what is Emil grateful for? I'm grateful for every single day that I wake up that I have an opportunity to to live um, and get closer to my authentic self. Fantastic. Are your relationships going well? They are improving. They are improving. I, again, I'm not going to lie. You know, everyone is is different um again i compare to where i was before in terms of I, I mentioned about where my priorities were work now family spouse kids uh friends family so they are improving uh yeah, and yeah, they can improve yeah. yeah they can keep improving yeah. yeah my um my kids i have my girls i have three girls they're they're pretty much teenagers 18 16 and 12 and uh hmm. You know, as they grow themselves, I have to constantly work on my relationship and how I engage with them because they're growing and mm -hmm. learning themselves. So, yeah, it's a constant challenge to keep on top of that. <laughs> so, finally, how is Camel making the world better? Wow. I think by trying to improve myself. That's the only thing I can do. I can't control what's happening out there. I can control what is happening in here. So, and I, I hope that by controlling and not controlling, but by improving what's happening in here transpires to ha what happens out there. So, yeah. Fantastic. Kamal, it's been an absolute pleasure and an inspiration having this conversation with you. And I hope that our listeners will get something out of it because I certainly have, uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. So have you any final words before we wrap it up? Uh, thank you again for for having me, Brendan. And thank you for you guys tuning in and listening. And um, absolutely had a, an amazing conversation here. Great questions. I, I loved it. And I hope that you guys stay in touch, uh, connect with Brendan, myself. And yeah, let's let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm.